Hello and good morning, friends and neighbors. I am Kylan and my pronouns are he, him, and his. As we continue to journey through a new series, I just want to welcome you to Neighborhood Church and know, and want you to know that this is the place where all of who you are is seen, valued, and beloved by God. As we move forward in this series, a place for you, and we continue to dig into scripture and learn how to apply scripture into our lives and how um, all of who we are is seen in scripture. Um, I am just super excited about this service and what's to come ahead. Um, But before we get ahead of ourselves, if you would click the link down below in the comment section, there you will find access to our worship guide um, that will give you the scripture, our community actions, um, for you to stay in the loop. There's also our children's clipboards where they have coloring pages and scriptures and Um, illustration pages so that way they are able to uh, chime into the service in their own special way. Um, Also, there is another link that will be coming in order for you to um, have access and let us know who's worshiping with you all. We only see the little number somewhere in one of these sides, (laughs) Um, but we want to know who is worshiping with you all so we can continue to build in community um, with all of us. Friends, (sighs) We are here. And who knew that October was going to fly by like this, right? Where did it go? But nevertheless, we are here in the first Sunday of November, November 1st as well. Um, And it is All Saints Sunday. All Saints Sunday is a time where we come together and we know in this series we've been looking at the stories of scripture and all those types of things. Um, But on All Saints Sunday, we, we are going to be cherishing and looking at how Um, We link these stories of scripture to the stories of the saints and the heroes and she rose and they rose in our lives. Um, And we take a moment to honor them. 2020 has indeed been a year, um, but there are so many stories out there that needs to be heard. And so many stories that we have had the honor and privilege of sharing life and space with. Um, And so this morning, we just want to ensure that we do that and give ourselves permission to hold space um, for our loved ones that have transitioned in this year um, and so much more. But friends, take a deep breath with me as we move forward in this service. Have an amazing day. Let's go worship. Watching today. My name is Hannah Hansen and this is Sylvia Brunson and I'm her mom and we just traveled up from Atlanta to see my mom. Hi and I'm Lorette Pichano and I am Sylvia's Noni and Hannah's mother and Cole's mother. <laughs> and this year um, mom's mom passed Helen. That's Helen. You see that? 
Sylvia. And she got to know that Sylvia was born, but didn't get to meet her in person. And so today, as we think about the saints, sometimes understanding God and the saints is a little bit confusing or hard for me. But one of the things my mom always helped me think of is keeping stories about those people that mean a lot to us and can understand God better. And so when we were driving up here, my Nana used to always take us, this is Helen, she used to always take us to church to get a blessing before we would drive back, when we would go the five hour trip to go visit her. And sometimes as a teenager, it felt a little silly to have to go and get that. But I found when we were driving early in the morning with Sylvia, I felt her presence watching over our car and keeping us safe while we were driving. So I was thinking that's one of the stories that I'll tell Sylvia and that will keep her great-grandmother Helen in part of our conversations is we'll always remember to be safe when we're driving and to say a prayer like great-grandma Helen and to remember that God's watching out over us. And, and Helen always wear a red hat and she was married to Fred, Fred Pachano. And he was my father, and he's Sylvia's great granddad. And he went to heaven a long time ago, and we miss him. But always with my mother, he used to worry about the weather when we were driving. So one time when he was sick, he was pointing to the TV, and he was telling me I needed to get back in the car and drive my kids home so we'd all be safe. And we know he's also watching over us. And he's probably really glad right now that my mother has come back and joined and they love to dance. So I think they're dancing in heaven and they're probably with my brother, John. And this is her. They're, and Sylvia's looking at her uncle John, who's my older brother, and he also went to heaven. But um, we think that they're happy there and they're seeing all the other relatives and that they know who Sylvia is because they love her and we're all family. And people are always alive because love is eternal and love always survives. Love lasts forever. Yeah. So we hope as you try to understand saints and God, it's always been helpful for me to think about those people. Sometimes I even consider my guardian angels watching over me. And I hope you'll help us remember to tell Sylvia stories of all of those other great people that help us understand God a little bit better. And we can share those stories together. And those are all your saints. Thanks, Mom. Thanks. Thank you. Hello, everyone. We'll see you again soon. Hi. Right, Sylvia? Right? <laughs> Hi, neighbors. Hi, y'all. I'm Angie. And I'm Andy. And we're the co-pastors here at Neighborhood Church, and we're really glad to get to worship with you this morning. For All Saints Sunday. That's right. Yeah. Um, we've been working our way through the different kinds of ways that the Bible talks to us and how mm -hmm. we can find a place for um, ourselves in the story of Scripture and how the Scripture helps us make a place for God in our lives. Um, and so... This morning, we get to continue in that, and we're talking about um, Scripture as story and metaphor. Um, and so, uh, as you probably know, there's lots of stories in the Bible, and yeah. we're going to share one of these from uh, the Gospels. And maybe a good precursor to even just hearing this text is that we believe deeply that this image that Jesus is always serious and was always very religious and always very somber in his very serious teachings is just wrong. Um, everything we know about like Jesus is that he was relational and that he was, he attracted large crowds, which you don't get by being a super boring, <laughs> unrelational person. Bowl of oatmeal. Um, yeah. Right? Um, and that he um, was engaging and told stories. And so um, we also believe he had a sense of humor and that if you read um, without that, like, stoic terms, Jesus in your brain. Um, like that holiness means that you're boring. Yeah, you know? but if holiness means that you like sometimes joke around a little bit. And, and that you're alive. And that you're fully human yeah. and fully divine. So understand great things and also understand that the humans around you don't always understand them. Then you might hear. So Andy's going to read this 
scripture passage from the Gospel of Mark, chapter yes. 4, verses 10 through 12. It's just a little tiny snippet, and he's going to read it how he hears Jesus. Say. That's right. And this comes after Jesus taught his disciples and this whole crowd in a parable. Um, and a parable is a particular kind of story, uh, which I'll mention in a second. But um, then uh, then there, this little bit comes after that. So um, after Jesus tells the, ter- the parables to the disciples, when they, the disciples and Jesus, were alone— The people around Jesus, along with the 12, asked him about the parables. He said to them, the secret of God's kingdom has been given to you, but to those who are outside, everything comes in parables. This is so that they can look and see, but have no insight, and they can hear, but not understand. Otherwise, they might turn their lives around and be forgiven. This is the word of God. the kind of snarky word of God for us, the people of God. Can we say thanks be to God? Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. Let's pray. God, you are good and we are grateful. We give thanks for stories because stories of all kinds, God, help us imagine and dream and understand and remember. God, our brains and our hearts relate to stories when we can't always know or understand all the facts or all the linear thinking. And God, I pray today that you would help us know you more deeply through the stories in scripture, through the stories in our narratives of you, and of through the stories of people who have helped us to know you. I pray all of these things in the name of Jesus the Christ, one of the greatest storytellers. Amen. Amen. Um, so I really like this image of Jesus, which is why we kind of stuck this in here is Jesus was a storyteller, um, yeah. before anything else, almost. I mean, he was a rabbi, but the way that he taught people was with stories. And if you read through the scriptures and the gospels, right, the part, the four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that tell about when Jesus was alive and teaching and all that often, often when someone asks him a question, he starts telling a story. Um, particularly in what we call the synoptic gospels. Mm -hmm. So in John, um, he's a little more prophetic and he's kind of like, I am this and that and the other, right? Which is a metaphor in and of itself, which is a way of storytelling. Because Jesus was not actually a vine. Right. Uh, right. But that's a beautiful metaphor. He was not actually the bread of life. Oh wait, some people think so, but Mm, the metaphor of that is really powerful. Um, And so again, for those of us who are still learning grammar and English as in school and haven't gotten to metaphor. A metaphor is when you talk about one thing and describe it like it's something else, right? So when Jesus talks about being the light of the world, it doesn't literally mean, like, and literally means actually precisely what the words say, right? So it doesn't mean Jesus is a light bulb that lit up the whole world or that Jesus is actually the sun that provides light to the whole world, S-U-N. But it means Jesus is joy and light and love that embodies love for the whole world, Yeah, right? Um, and parables are another way of kind of approaching meaning. Yeah. Um, they're often stories and usually stories that have um, characters and flavors and settings that, that are very accessible and approachable to everyday ordinary folks. It's like um, people working in fields or people um, baking bread or people... Um, uh, cleaning their house. Cleaning their house or knocking on the doors of judges' houses in the middle of the night. and or Taking care of their sheep. Yeah. Now, some of these <laughs> might not be so common to us, but again, that goes back to that context piece, right? So the folks that Jesus was talking to, this yeah. would have been everyday normal stuff. Yeah. Um, and so Jesus teaches in parables. Um, and often the parables don't have like a clear ending. So it's not like um, Jesus tells a tidy little story and then says, the moral of the story is young people, you know, always do your homework, always brush your teeth. That's not how Jesus works. He tells these stories and then kind of, you know, lets the folks that hear the story try to deal with it. Which you kind of can't imagine, I can't imagine someone doing without a little like smile on their face, right? You lay out this story that's a little bit confusing and then just let it sit there or a little yeah. bit like pointy just uh-huh. a little bit, right? Um, and and then you just let it sit there for a little bit. So it's a little bit like we might learn about fables now, but they yeah. usually have a like moral ending. These are less precise. They're often shorter and have um, a much more open-ended kind of sense. Um, and uh, 
I think it's a good point to mention this. I had a seminary professor, Tom Long, that said that you can you can read a parable and kind of feel like, oh, I think I understand what this means. It has one kind of layer of meaning. But the more that you sit with parables, often um, it's like there's a trap door that sort of opens up and then, oh, you fall into some other layer of meaning. And maybe if you sit with it longer, you find more me- more and more meaning in it the longer you kind of sit with it. Which is part of how we believe these stories work, right? So we have talked a little bit, alluded a little bit in the last few weeks to how we believe that the scripture is still like, we talk about it being a living document, right? We talk about the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, being able to work through these words and speak to all of us, even in modern day. And this is part of it. Yeah. Because whether you read that parable every year, um, you you keep finding meaning. And as your life changes and circles around, the meaning for it might change and circle around for you. And last week with the prophets, Andy talked about situating ourselves in the stories of the prophets, right? Like how, who are we in the story? How does that resonate with us? How does, how do the different perspectives in the um, prophetic stories and truths speak to us? You can do the same thing in the parables. Yeah, absolutely. If I was the farmer, what would this mean for me? Yeah. If I was the landowner, what would this mean for me? If I was the shepherd versus the sheep? Um, and think about that, situating ourselves in these yeah. mystery stories. Yeah. Um, and uh, in, in this particular little explanation passage, uh, you know, so the disciples are like, Jesus, explain the parables to us, please. Like, why are you speaking in these parables? Um, and he... Uh, and this kind of snarky bit at the end, which is really interesting how this still like comes through in the scripture. But he says, um, I, he says, I speak in parables so that uh, they can look and see, but have no insight and they can hear, but not understand. Otherwise they might turn their lives around and be forgiven. Oh no. Yeah, because of course that is the point of what Jesus is up to in the world is having people turn their hearts and lives around, turn and reorient towards God and towards justice and towards God's kingdom. Um, and, and if you hold on to parables, um, you, you kind of can get to, to that place, right? To understanding who God is and how the kingdom works um, and how we can participate in it um, in, in new and rich ways. Um, and, and Jesus wants that for us. But I also think, again, I think we've said before, the direct assault doesn't often work for human brains, right? We have like defenses up um, and parables help us to kind of lower some of our defenses um, around our egos, around our own preferences and our own little kind of projects and stuff. Um, parables can kind of cut through those things and kind of catch us off guard and then we can kind of be a little more open. So like what stories in your life, like if you're a reader or a writer or um, I mean, even just read in school, right? Sadly, the large majority of Americans never pick up a book again after they finish school. I hope that's not you, friends. We encourage you to read stories. Keep reading. Um, Stay in school. Rainbow. Yeah, that's right. Um, but, but so what stories have stuck with you? What stories do you think about as we're navigating these days? Um I mean, I think of people, I hear people talking about um, some of the young adult literature, right? That um, Hunger Games and Harry Potter um, and all kinds of books. Some of you will have all others um, that help you think through um, how to be in the world in times of crisis. Yeah, with corrupt leadership or with um, changing politics and... Um, and kind of the threat of rising evil, so to speak. Yeah, Um, a friend and I were talking just last night about friendships and relationships and how friendships can be so central to life um, based on an Atlantic article that we were reading earlier this week. But she referenced um, Anne of Green Gables and her friendship with Diana and then how that shaped their lives and how they called each other soul friends. And um, this beautiful thing that we were talking about something very factual, but what resonated was a story that had held that truth. Yeah. So I just want to touch for a minute on the other kinds of story in scripture, and then we're going to stop talking about it and let you hear some stories. Yeah. Um, but so scripture is full of stories. Now there is um, some understanding of scripture, some theological perspectives that talk about this book like it is all fact and talk about it being literally true, which means that every word is historically factually true. 
And that's not the case if you believe um, biblical scholars and historians. And, and frankly, the way that the Bible works itself. Like, if every word is literally true, then as we were saying before, Jesus would be a vine or right. Jesus would be some bread. And it and contradicts itself. <laughs> yeah. It contradicts itself. So even if you go to the very beginning, and this is a controversial text for some people, it is not for Methodists um, and not for us. But in the very beginning in Genesis, um, in the beginning, right? Genesis chapter one, verse one, um, is the creation story. And it's a poem. It's a, I mean, it could have been sung, it could have been chanted, but it's a poem that captures the beauty and glory and mystery of creation and God shaping things like calling forth order out of chaos and light out of darkness, creating um, creatures and then humans to delight in all of this with God, right? And so and it's beautiful. That's like the first chapter of yeah. Genesis is this kind of structured poetry, um, which which has this rich story to it. Mm -hmm. And then the second chapter, third. The, well, second, second and third, third yeah. is like a kind of different way of framing the it's same the kind same of thing. the same story in a different order. So they cannot be both factually true. Yeah. Right there, the first two uh, chapters of scripture. Because the second chapter is more of like this God reached down into the mud and crafted a hum human being and, and breathed wow. life into them yeah. um, and then created all the animals and things to for humans. Um, but both of these approaches mm -hmm. point to this kind of underlying meaning. There's right? some truth in both of them. There's different ways of telling them. One is like, how were we created? How are we close to this loving God um, in the, who wants to be in relationship with us. Who gets God's hands in the dirt, right? And the first one is about the mystery and Cosmic, awe. And yeah. can you imagine? I mean, so if you don't know, these stories were told first. They were passed down verbally through generations long before they were written down. And can you imagine? I mean, folks who like were more nomadic and sat out under the stars around a fire at night, looking up, watching meteors shoot across the sky, being able to truly see the night sky in a way we can't really imagine in this yeah. modern day. It's hard to find those times and trying to find words for that. And so they say, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And they pass this story down to their children, this poem of beauty. And I also love the the blending with like this kind of idea of like, grandmother, where did people come from? You know? And it's like, oh, well, child, let me tell you, you know, God, the one who has made all the things, reaches down into this dirt and makes us. We're made of this dirt. You know, and then the, breathes life yeah. into us, and we are full of God. We are this right? combination of earth and God, you know, like. How, it's beautiful. So great. <laughs> now, I want to pause for a second and say, we don't believe that either of these um, contradict what we know scientifically about how life became on this planet. We believe these are narrative um, in other traditions. Some people get really worried about this, so take a deep breath. Um, but we believe mythology is a word here, a, a story. Framing stories. That yeah. explains how something became true, right? So both of these things can be true. God can have created this whole world, and we can talk about it in poetry or an interpersonal relationship, and it can still be true that evolution is how the scientific understanding and explanation of how God created the world, right? Yeah. So we have stories, and throughout all of Hebrew scripture, there are stories. There's the story of Jonah that's understood to just be a story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, but also a story that Jesus used later yes. to kind of help explain what Jesus himself was up to. And the story of Job that we hear talked about probably a story, yeah. a, a legend. Um, and then, of course, there's other kind of approaches, right? Like there's what we might call like history, yeah. um, uh, kind of chronicling you know, kind of political leaders, kings and wars. Judges and, 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 um, yeah, um, and, and how the prophets interacted with them and kind of told the kings how to shape up and um, all the bad stuff that people did that, that got them in trouble with God and the prophets. And um, then later in Acts, there's stories of the apostles trying to live out what Jesus taught them after he died and was resurrected. And it is just a narrative, kind of a journal tracking of their life. But in all of those things, they're told from a particular perspective to try mm -hmm. to um, convey a certain sense of meaning. Mm -hmm. um, and a certain kind of overall kind of arc. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
you should you should also take them historically with a grain of salt. They were not written as we might ca- call history now. They were written to express the the kind of background of a people. It's more of um, a biography. Somebody told me, have you ever read, um, maybe you've come across like these um, church histories, like from from Methodist churches or other kinds of churches, like even now, and you go back and through the records and you find like a description of like what the the opening uh, consecration of the sanctuary was like in 1960 or whatever. And somebody will write like, um, a marvelous uh, spirit filled worship service was held on the grounds of the newly dedicated church and the bishop so and so spoke and, and uh, everyone was entirely sanctified. And then a magnificent meal was enjoyed upon the grounds. Maybe you guys um, haven't read multiple versions of these, but we have. Yeah, and Welcome you, to our life. You can find them. Uh, and But that's sort of what like Acts is like. It is this kind of um, ruby colored, rose colored, you know, um, really uh, wonderfully pleasant version of, of the story just to kind of it, uh, convey kind of like what the feeling of those experiences were. Yes. Whether or not it's like, no, there were actually... 2,800 people and not 3,000 or whatever. And you if, know? you know, in the stories that we've read in our predominantly white churches that we've served, if you talk to um, the, if you ask that story from a black servant who was working that day <laughs> um, and hearing all this, like these words being said about faithfulness and Jesus and all this stuff and then being treated horribly yeah maybe it'd be a different story yeah. or you ask the seven-year-old about their scratchy crinolines and um yeah, right. their uncomfortable <laughs> how hot it was and, and yeah. how long the boring preacher talked or whatever right yeah. it's the thing yeah um so also in the new testament we have another layer of story um that we'll touch on next time um which is kind of the stories about what has not happened yet uh so i want to sort put of a, a form of prophecy yeah. sort of story yeah sort, sort of, of image and metaphor um and poetry so but we'll yeah. talk a little more about that yeah but today we also want to talk about the stories of our lives because it's all saint sunday and we don't just learn about the stories of God and the way God has moved in the world through scripture. We talk about that all the time. We learn about it through scripture. We learn about it through songs. We learn about it through art, all these things. We also learn from people. And on All Saints Sunday, if you've never celebrated it before, um, this is a day that usually the first Sunday in November when we um, closest to um like All Saints Day is November 1st, right? And there's some history around that with Halloween and um, Day of the Dead and all of these beautiful celebrations that can that all root in a Christian practice. Yeah. Um, but on All Saints Sunday, we remember the folks that we've loved who have died in the past year, and we kind of commend them again to the um, cloud of witnesses. The communion of saints. Yeah, right? um, who surround us. And we have this really beautiful theology that we believe that we are connected with these folks who are um, eternal life, who are in eternal life with God through Jesus. And that at the mystery of our communion table, that the power of the Holy Spirit makes us all present together in the um, mysterious time and presence of God. So it's this really beautiful thing. Yeah, when you, you hear us say this, um, when we celebrate communion, when we gather around the table, we gather with all the folks who have ever gathered around the table with Jesus and who who will ever gather around the table with Jesus. And so it's this moment where time uh, it becomes kind of condensed and we are all together in this great cloud of witnesses. And when we say saints, we don't mean that any human is perfect because that's not real. Not how it works. Um, but what we mean is that these are folks who have been a witness in our lives, who have um, helped us see God at work in the world, helped us understand God uh, in a really tangible and concrete way. And sometimes their flaws are more powerful or present in our life than their strengths. And sometimes there's been harm, and sometimes um, we still have wounds and emotional healing to do. And even if everything was wonderful, we're often still grieving on this day. But we hold these folks and their memory and the ways that they will continue to live on in our lives up to God today um, and offer their, their lives and our experience of them to the presence of God altogether. Um, so we also remember the ways they've influenced us yeah. in beautiful ways. The way they've taught us, the way they've nurtured, uh, nurtured us, the way they've uh, corrected, corrected us and challenged us. And this particular day, um, many of you may not know this, but this particular day we 
have a really powerful celebration, um, remembering some of the folks of our predecessor congregations, some of whom continue to be active, able to be active in this neighborhood church. Those of you who don't know, we're a relatively new church, just a few years old, and we were formed out of the merger of two declining con congregations, two congregations who kind of shifted in their life and decided to invest all that they had and all that they were, um, resources and people gifts and talents and, and yeah. um yeah people power into creating and building a new congregation with god for all of you um and it is because of the faithfulness of some of these saints that we celebrate today that we are able to exist as a congregation some of them were homebound from the time we started and you may not have never met but they were part of congregations for decades that led to us being able to exist now. And some of them have been active and you will recognize them from worship and you are mourning their loss with us. And some of them lived very long and full lives. A couple of these folks that we're naming today were 102 years old. Something um, was in the water at Druid Hills, yeah. one of our predecessor congregations. Those folks lived for a long time. Yeah. Um, so we're going to hear some of those stories and, and see some of their faces. And, and we invite you to share your own stories in the comments or email them in. And we can send those to families, too, for you if you want, um, if you have stories you want to share. Um, and for you to just in your own worship space today to lift up the names of folks, not just this year who have passed away, but the folks, the saints in your life who you want to remember and lift into the presence of God. Today we're remembering Judy Wang. She was an amazing woman who passed away in 2020. Judy lived well over 100 years and she remained loyal to old and new friends in her church community. When visiting with Judy, she would say immediately, tell me what's going on. And she really wanted to know. She was a good communicator she had been a career woman um, working at the bank during her working life and right up to the end of her life and showed, she showed amazing strength, love, and caring for others. One of the ways she demonstrated that caring and that loving was that even though she really liked traditional worship and uh, more formal type of church music, she really wanted young folks and others who had a openness to more contemporary worship and contemporary music to feel like they were an important part of the community as well. So she was willing to let go of that desire for nothing but traditional and, uh, and formal worship uh, to embrace more contemporary styles of worship so that uh, she could also embrace those new people who were coming into the church. She was uh, more committed to people than she was to form and function. Judy was an amazing woman, and we remember her with great love today. Well, Paul and I grew up together on Page Avenue, along with our older brother and sister. He kept um, many pets, but the last several years were with cats, and he had a great number of cats. Some One neighbor gave him three or four at a time, and after they were gone, he'd get three or four more. And uh, But I called them free-range cats because they had to scour the neighborhood to get enough to eat. But we uh, lived a carefree life when we were children, and I think that makes such a difference in our adulthood. He enjoyed church and really loved him, the people and uh, the preachers, and I miss him a great deal. I've 
known Jim and Reba longer than anybody in my life other than immediate family. And uh, so they've been very dear friends to me for ever since I was a, a tween, I think. A lot of very fond memories, especially being in the choir together with them. Jim, Jim and I were both in the bass section, uh, almost always sitting next to each other, just had a lot of fun. During, during the transition of seasons, as things were getting cooler, and it wasn't quite cool enough to wear a jacket, but not warm enough to wear short sleeves. He and I both <laughs> had these very similar blue flannel shirts that we would wear while we were down here at the church. And Mark Clement used to come in and call us the, the blue flannel boys when we were down here to get working. Uh, but I think Jim was absolutely committed to making sure that the church remained a presence here in this neighborhood. My name is Mari McClure Maldonado. This year for All Saints Day, I'm focusing on the memory of my father. My father passed away suddenly in March. He'd been very sick for a while, and his sudden passing has um, been really hard because it was right around when the COVID lockdown began. Um, one of the greatest memories I have of my father, though, is when he was with me in the labor and delivery room when I was delivering my son back in 2010, it was really important to me. It was a special time and to have him with me was a big deal because we'd always had a very strained relationship together. Um, many things with that. And he truly was a blessing right then for me because so many things that I was going through and I had just moved back here from Latin America and that was one of my favorite memories that we had and the fact that my dad loved to sing. He loved to sing about multiple things and we we enjoyed music together. That was one thing that we truly did bond over as well. Um, my mother had also passed away when I was when I was a teenager. I just turned 15 years old and she passed away. So each year I'm always focusing on her as well because she was one of my guiding lights. She was, I was very close to her. Um, she was very important to me, but this year I'm really focusing on my father and, and what he meant to all of us and, 
and how we can honor Him in this way during during this special time of year. This is one of my favorite times of year so that I can reflect and, and meditate on these losses and to focus on the peace that, that I know that me and my family need. And it's an honor to be a part of the All Saints Day. Hello everyone. For this All Saints Day, I want to lift up my grandfather, Warren Johnson, who had passed away earlier this year in March. And this is, I think, the most accurate photo I could find of my grandfather. Um, Yes, that is him with a cowboy hat on and a lasso around his neck with my grandmother. Um, My grandfather was very much a cowboy, so much so that he lived out in the middle of nowhere, had a farm, raised his kids out there raised his grandkids as well. He taught me how to drive the tractor, how to ride the horses and move the cows into a different pasture, how to use a lasso. Um, There are so many memories I can think of for my grandfather. I think of the times that he drove down to visit me and my brothers out out of nowhere and just to say that he missed us. I can think of the times that he came to really every one of my events and how he was always proud of me. I think of uh, the time that I flipped the go-kart as a teenager and he covered for me by telling my dad that I ran over a stick, which is why it wouldn't start. Um, There are so many things like our mutual love for banana pudding or when I was, whenever I was really little, I'd wait for him to come home from work and he and I would have two Oreos each and a little glass of milk and we'd talk about our days. I wouldn't be the person I am today if it weren't for him. He taught me how to love others unconditionally, how to see the best in all people. And I know I wouldn't be in the position that I am if it weren't for all of his support. And so on on this All Saints Day, I lift him up as a saint in my own life because I know I wouldn't be who I am if it weren't for him. Today, I'm remembering Betty Jones, one of our church members who passed away in early 2020 after 90 years of fruitful living. She showed love to everyone and saw God's light in them. She might be found welcoming folks to the Saturday morning food pantry and pausing to be available for a meaningful chat. She regularly made calls to visitors for the welcome team um, over the years and to many homebound folks for the caring team. And she took these jobs seriously. She truly showed love during doing these jobs. Her intellectual curiosity led her to church classes that studied world religions and peace with justice issues. Being a teacher, lifelong learning was a must for Betty. Betty was a great friend to people in all generations and a great role model for living in love and not judgment. We loved Betty Jones. As a part of our All Saints celebration, I would like to give thanks for the life of Evelyn Coleman. Evelyn was a member of Druid Hills United Methodist Church, one of our partner churches that helped create Neighborhood Church. And she was a member there for 50, 60 years and lived into her late 90s. She was one of the most loving and supportive people that uh, we had in the church. And uh, I remember especially her deep, deep alto voice and her laugh that went along with that deep voice. She loved to laugh. And she was one of the most caring and supportive people that we had in the church. She belonged to one of the Sunday school classes called the Quillian class and was also active in one of the circles of the United Methodist Women. She kept us all in her prayers, and I especially loved the times when we would get together 
in her retirement community and celebrate the Sacrament of Holy Communion together because she was no longer able to come to the church. But she always kept us all in her heart, and we give thanks for her faith and for her long and well-lived life. Friends, will you pray with me? Merciful God of all time, in gratitude, in deep, deep gratitude for this moment, for this place, for these people, God, we give ourselves to you, our whole stories and our whole lives. Take us out from this time together to live as transformed people, changed because we have been touched by you, the living Lord. And through your stories and your love, we can no longer remain the same. Ask much of us, God. Expect much of us. Enable much by us. Encourage many through us. And God, love through us. So God, we pray that we may live to your glory. That we might live out the story of your love both as inhabitants of earth and as citizens of the commonwealth of heaven with this great cloud of witnesses who bear your love. We pray all of these things in the name of the resurrected one, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Friends, the saints have given us so much with their patient words of instruction and guidance. I think about my grandma, um, Miss Emily Williams, who um, taught me about how to pray and how to read the Bible and how to sing the songs um, of of the faith uh, out of out of a hymnal and and just just from, from memory. What a gift to have things like prayer and song and the word of, of God that we can, we can rely on. And I think about all those saints that, that show up, sometimes without words, just with their quiet actions to help people have food and food pantries or help write letters to leaders or um, who staff close closets and stand up with a silent witness sometimes for those 
um, those who are in need or those who are oppressed. Also think about the generosity of the saints and how the saints have given so much of their lives and their time and how we all benefit of those things. When, when I was in summer camp ministry, I worked at a camp that um, had been created um, using the proceeds of the sale of an older camp. Um, and our, one of our board members uh, used to remind us all the time that the really cool new camp stuff that we were doing, the new buildings we were building, the swimming pool we had built, all that stuff, was possible because of small gifts um, of saints over many years um, that accumulated into, uh, into the, the large amount of money that we, we were working with to build this new camp. Um, and, and friends at Neighborhood Church, we have benefited from the generosity of saints who over many years as a part of two different congregations and a part of other congregations um, uh, gave small amounts over time just to keep the, the buildings going and um, keep staff employed and to give uh, into the community for various projects. Um, and friends, we, we have benefited from those gifts. And friends, it's our opportunity to be saints in this world now, to be the folks that God uses, um, to give generously of our time and our energy and our patience and our attention of our resources, including our financial resources, for the purposes of God, to shine light in this world, um, to keep ministry moving, to keep uh, people being fed and clothed and to keep working for justice in our communities. So friends and neighbors, I invite you to give. There are many ways that you can give. We invite you uh, to give of your financial resources either by text to the number that is appearing here, um, or you can go to our website and um, set up a gift that way uh, or, or a recurring gift even as a way of laying down um, over time uh, generosity in a consistent way. We also invite you to give of uh, who you are uh, into ministries in our communities. There's a lot going on in this world, uh, particularly in this coming week. Um, and so uh, if you would like, please fill out your uh, form. That's the let us know that you are with us form, and that gets you on our email list. Um, or you can always check out our website as to what's happening. Um, obviously, there's something happened this Tuesday, I think. Um, it is voting day. Uh, many of you have already voted, um, but others have not yet voted and will come to our church building um, on, on Tuesday uh, to vote. And so we'll be there um, doing what we call line warming um, and we'll be serving sna snacks and coffee and refreshments and just kind of helping people feel comfortable as they're um, in line to vote if there is a line. Um, and a lot of community partners have stepped up to kind of help resource that. Um, and if you want to be a part of that work, you're welcome to send me or Angie a call or Kylan, um, and we'll get you plugged in. Um, there's a lot of, lot of work to do just to welcome folks um, on, on that day. Um, and there are other things in this world. You may be called to one thing or another. But what I know is that because we are part of this community, um, you are invited to be a saint of God and to shine with God's light and to work for justice in this world um, through restoration, restoration through relationship with God and other people, because that's what saints do. And that's who we are as neighbors. So friends and neighbors, I invite you to be a saint this day and to give generously. Amen. Hi, friends and neighbors. My name is Michelle. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I'm the community curator here in the neighborhood community. Every week uh, during our A Place for You series, we are just taking a few minutes to talk about how we can put into practice the things that we have talked about during this worship service together uh, as we continue to reclaim scripture and as we continue to uh, grow in our knowledge and in our ways of reading the Bible together. Um, so today is all about stories, as you've heard Angie and Andy talk about um, kind of how stories are made up and how we incorporate them into all that we do. Um, everything that we do is part of our story, right? Both as individuals and as a community. Um, but also that this book that we read, this Holy Bible, um, is a story and it is a collection of stories and there are many ways to read the Bible, um, but I think that remembering that uh, when we read it, it is a story and that there's 
a larger kind of arc and narrative to this whole story, I think that is when we can really start to uh, dive deep and to understand and really hear from uh, what God is speaking and was speaking through these writers um, and continues to speak to us today. So when I was in uh, growing up in youth group, I my friends and I we would play this game and be like, okay, uh, we'd kind of use the Bible in a, in a funny way, but as like a magic eight ball. So we'd be like, okay, um, how, how am I going to do on how I don't know how to study for my biology test. So let me just uh, see what what advice I can get, and then we would open to a random page and just like find a random verse. So uh, this verse that I just pointed to says, for equally hateful to God are the ungodly and their ungodliness. So then we'd be like, okay, well, if I get, if I get a good score on my test, then, you know, I'm probably godly. Um, but if not, then maybe I need to like pray more. It was, it was bad. Don't do that. Don't read the Bible like this. Um, the Bible is not a bunch of individual tidbits that were just all, all happened to be put into one book together. That's not what it is. Um, the, the stories, the books of the Bible were intentionally chosen um, over years and by lots of different people who came together. Like they, they are important and they're in here for a reason. They were decided, lots, lots did not make it into what we kind of know as the Bible today. And we have to read the Bible and the stories in the Bible in context. So I've been thinking a lot about how our story um, as a community, both, both as a neighborhood church community and a community of folks that live in Atlanta, but also just a, a collection of human beings living in 2020. Like how different our story has been even this year from last year, um, from before March. I mean, being shaped by uh, this COVID-19 pandemic, being shaped by the continuing um, racism and murders of black and brown bodies in the streets in our country. Um, that is part of our story. That is part of our, our collective story as a community. And if we were getting advice, you know, so I, I think right now of like blog posts that come out and um, I mean, books that are being written, stories that are being told, um, segments that are being shared on the internet, um, even like Facebook posts that are being shared. I mean, all of those are ways of telling stories and those are all shaped by everything that's going on in our world right now. Um, so, you know, within however many years people look back and find an archived Facebook post, but don't read that in context. Um, that's kind of like pointing just somewhere in the Bible and deciding that the advice that's given um, is just, it's, it's just gonna work for everyone. That goes with the rules and the laws and the teachings, I mean, everything. But what we see overall in, in this storybook um, is that there's kind of, you know, there is, there is this, there's a direction that the Bible is going and there's a direction that all of the stories kind of fall under, um, that this God of love is a God that is here for us, a God that chooses justice, a God that seeks restoration, and a God that asks us to do the same things. So reading it in that context um, is really important and has really shaped the way that I read scripture, has really helped me to be able to put some of these teachings that I never understood in, in context um, and have a little bit more understanding. And if it didn't originally help me get more understanding, to be able to ask questions in community together is so important um, and can help us to really discern together what God is saying and how this applies to us today in 2020, um, even though it was written a long, long time ago. So that's a little bit about story. Um, stories are fun. Stories can have the whole range of emotions that we feel. I mean, that's all part of our story and that's all present in the Bible too. So I think that it gives us a little bit of freedom, a little bit of room to, to breathe and to read, not in a way of, 
wow, I don't understand this, so clearly I'm doing something wrong, but wow, I am reading this with a spirit of curiosity, and I'm excited to ask questions. I'm excited to talk to folks about this. I'm excited to sit with this and figure out you know, what, what this is saying for me and for us today. Um, so if you remember nothing else today, friends, remember that there is a place for you in the story of God. Um, that this book is not meant to be a weapon, but it is meant to be something that um, is, you know, kind of coming along with us on this journey of faith and helping to guide us on this journey of faith. Um, so there's a place for you in this neighborhood church community. There is a place for you in the story of God, and we are excited to continue to get to live into that story with you together. Hi neighbors, I hope you all are well today. Um, my name is Wesley Rhodes, pronouns he, him, his, um, and I'm excited to be doing the love feast with you today. Um, so if you'll gather your food and your drink and your people, that'd be awesome. Today I've got vanilla wafer sandwiches because they remind me of my mormor, which is Swedish for mother's mother. Um, she passed over 10 years ago now, um, but she liked these little cookies and as a kid, I liked them. And so they remind me of her. So that's what I chose today. And I've just got a seltzer water with me too. Um, so if you will join with me and repeat after me as we say these words together, um, as we go into this time of um, our love feast. Holy Comforter, we gather in your name, invited by Jesus, bound together with your spirit, in union with each other. Feed our bodies and our spirits with your comforting presence so that we may be a comfort to others. Bless this food and break open our hearts. Bless this drink and pour out your love. Amen. Um, as you go into this week, which is sure to be a week of all weeks, um, I ask you in the words of benediction to go out and practice love, practically um, engage with others this week um, and take care of yourself um, in the spirit of Christ um, and the idea of love um, because we're all gonna need it this week um, and we're gonna need each other no matter what happens um, on Tuesday or thereafter. Um, go in peace, neighbors. Go in love. Come in. Okay, now.
See you later, neighbors. Have a great week.